Hi everyone, please be advised there are some special trigger warnings for this episode of Little Miss Recap. We are talking about a cult, so there's filthy language, of course. There's talk about drug use, of course. There's alcoholism, there's controlled eating, there's eating disorders. So if any of that is a little dark for you to take on, we completely understand and we hope you'll join us for our next episode. If you'd like to stick around, we hope you enjoy the show. This is the uh, Galactic A-Team. So those were mom's main ambassadors. They were with her all the time. That's St. Germain and that's obviously Robin Williams. Every person in this picture is no longer alive, but they're on mom's etheric team. Carrie Fisher. Elvis is actually mom's son. Oh, Trump. <laughs> well, he's in the physical, but still, he's on the team. Oh, uh, John Lennon, that's Ashtar. He's the command of the, the main starship. But Robin was mom's main ambassador. She signed over, like, the divine plan for him to make changes. Like, he's a very, very big part of this, and humanity's going to see that. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where we, we, we're getting closer to ascension every day. Like I said, I would likely like to ascend, not today, but I, I think don't it... want you to ascend ever. Okay, then we'll just stay alive forever. I'm um, just gonna dress you up and put you on the bed like Mother God. Can I be can I be covered in Christmas lights? <laughs> I want to understand why we're covered in Christmas lights. Well, it was Christmas. Oh, and it wasn't Christmas. No, it wasn't time. Christmas. It was April. Mm-hmm. Yeah, none of this has anything to do with an actual holiday. Okay, but who knows? I mean, what, whatever the Galactics told them is what we need to do. Yeah, guys, my name's Amy Archer. I am host of Little Miss Recap. I'm here with the co-host of Little Miss Recap, the mother god to my father god, oh, shit. Amanda Lipnack right now. <laughs> oh, wow. I thought being a Janelle to your, Chris- or the Christine to your Janelle was a lot, but wow. Now we're talking gods. We've yeah. reached god level. What is your overall take on this documentary? Like, everybody's talking about, we're talking, guys, if you haven't seen it yet, about Love Has Won, The Cult of Mother God. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched it yet, shut this off. Go watch it. Just go watch it. Go none watch it. Of this will make sense. I promise you. If you just listen to us talk about it, nothing will make sense. I could also tell you that even if you've watched it, a lot of it will still not make sense. Yes, we're not going to be able to clear this all up. Um, Mm-mm. I thought it was fascinating. I thought it was absolutely bonkers. Like every time I thought this was weird, it got weirder and weirder Agreed. and weirder. I am incredibly sad. Uh, for Amy's family. Agreed. Particularly her children. Agreed. Who seem to be thriving. I hope that is true. I think there were some missteps by her mother, but we'll talk about that. I think there were some Mm -hmm. missteps by her mother too, but I also sort of understand them. I don't Mm -hmm. know. It's just, Mm -hmm. the whole thing is freaking sad. And cuckoo magoo crazy. Cuckoo magoo. Now, you said that you wanted to be, your dream job would be a cult deprogrammer. Yes, I think being a cult deprogrammer would be amazing. See, I think I would like to be a cult researcher. Oh, okay. Like, I would like Ooh. to expose the cults. You and I could do this work together. You expose them, and then you get me a pipeline of clients. <laughs> and then we okay. podcast about it. Okay. <laughs> this, this is how we quit our jobs, Amy. This is how we do it. As long as podcasting is still involved. Of course. It has to be. I'm not giving this up. Those 12 people who listen to Little Miss Recap would be very upset if it went away. (laughs) It's a lot more than 12 that listen to us. We think so. We hope so. Okay. So So since we have so much to cover, we're going to jump in. I I took notes on this. And here's the thing. I always look at things as an English major. You know this. Of course you do. So I I looked at the text. And then I came up with my guided questions to go through the text. Okay. And I feel like there's kind of three central questions to this documentary. Number mm-hmm. one is, was this a quote unquote successful cult? And what does that even mean, right? Okay. For something to be a successful cult. Number two, what happened on the way to heaven here? <laughs> like yeah. what happened to make these people believe these things? Right. Okay? Right. And number three, was there any wrongdoing? Like, that's something we really need to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Like, I guess who's to blame is 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 the short whose fault is all question. of this? Yeah, whose fault is it? Robin Williams. Yeah. At the end of every episode, Jenny and I did with um, Little House on the Prairie, we would say, "Whose fault is this?" Yeah. And I feel like <laughs> we're, we're doing it here. Yeah. It's whose fine. fault is this? So we have a cast of characters. Um, the ones who we meet who are not involved in the cult. The filmmaker, by the way, is Hannah Olson. So mm-hmm. we're going to give her some credit for stumbling upon this and giving this gift to us. I, I actually read how she sort of got into this. Oh, tell me. Uh, how she found this. So after 2016, she started researching a lot of the conspiracy theories, a lot of the fringe groups that had been boiling under the surface and now were really boiling up. And mm-hmm. that's how she found these folks. Because they there's a QAnon portion of this program. Yes, there is. So that's kind of how she did it, looking at just kind of conspiracy theory groups after mm-hmm. the 2016 election. Okay, gotcha. So the people that we meet, and I don't know if I evolved them, but here's here's a, a somewhat of a list. We meet Mary Lauer. She's a reporter in Crestone. We meet Dan Warwick. He's the sheriff. Mm-hmm. Kevin is the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. Linda's Amy's mom, Tara's Amy's sister, Andrew and Sarah are former members, Debbie is Hope's mom, aka right. Ashley. Right. And then Amy's kids are Cole, Maddie, and Aiden. And then we see um, some of the cult members are, and they're all Archaea, Archaea, blah, 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 Archaea, yes. blah, blah, blah. So Archaea, El Moy- Mora, Mor- Moria, Hope, aka Ashley. Aurora, those two I just call Dumb and Dumber throughout the whole thing. Oh they're my god, idiots! They are, and they're so interchangeable. In they front of the that Florida, game. they are the Florida public school systems <laughs> example of shining stars. I, I swear to God, I don't know what these two are, but you're right; they're interchangeable. They're interchangeable, and they're behind. They're in front of that, you know, sheet with her face on it, doing their pop, their YouTube, and changing mm-hmm. the world. I'm sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uncle T. Mary, Mother Mary, uh, Michael the Archangel, Aaron, I just wrote crazy bitch, and <laughs> Keith, the healer. And then, of course, we have all the father gods, which we'll get into. Right. Okay. Everyone she banged. Yeah. So. And Amy, Mother God. And Amy. So we, I did episode by episode. So okay. episode one. Okay. It opens where we see the cops bust in the house open and they find a corpse. And well, the they way show Jeff, it. The way Jeff even answered the door. And they're like, we're looking for a mother and child. I don't know yes. why they thought there was a child there. Yeah, I don't know why either. And they're like, we're looking for mother. And the, and he's like, she's in her rest. Like the way he said it, I was like, she's at rest. Oh, she's at rest. Like like, says, yeah. Oh, what's happening here? I know. I know. I love, I love to take notes this way. Like as I'm watching it the first time, because I've really captured my Oh my God. What is happening here? But the way that I took notes for this screwed me up because I took notes through episode two first. Oh, okay. So yeah, whatever. whatever. Okay. So we meet Mary Lowers, reporter Mary, I call her. And she tells us a little bit about Crestone. There's a, I looked it up. The population is 141 people. I looked, I looked up where it was. I didn't go Mm -hmm. deep into the town, but like it's near, you know, alien markers and stuff yeah. it's it's in yeah. the real weird part of colorado she says she's half hippie and half redneck and i'm like same same girl same same <laughs> i like it I, I could i could see i mean i'm not very rednecky but i'm yeah since moving to the country i'm half redneck a hundred hippie i'm half hippie half preppy okay all right so she says the veil is thin here mm-hmm. you know the veil between worlds and weird shit happens Mm-hmm. Then we see Sheriff Warwick. Now he says they did get a lot of calls from the families to do welfare checks. Sure. But they all turned to Mother God. And then he he kind of drops that sentence. Yeah. We don't know if they ever did these welfare checks. What right. happened? <laughs> okay. I wrote, so you didn't do anything, I guess? I guess that's your way of telling us you didn't do anything. And yet, if anybody had shown up for a welfare check on Amy Carlson for like the last year of her life, Mm -hmm. it's real Mm -hmm. clear she's not well. Yeah. Yeah. So we get some audio of Kevin from the FBI questioning Father God and Elle and they're in custody. Right. Now we get some footage of the followers and how they came to meet Amy and how they came to find her. And Elle and uh, Hope slash Ashley are doing most of the heavy lifting here with the descriptions. Mm-hmm. And 
Elle tells us that Amy has been Marilyn Monroe, yes, Cleopatra, of course. Of course. Madame Blavitsky, sure. and Joan of Arc. I appreciate oh, amongst that she's the rest. Amongst other, because there's like 530 some odd. Yes. Yes. Why is it that when people are reincarnated, they're almost always famous people? And how come they're always Joan of Arc? How many people were Joan of Arc? Actually, I think more people have been Cleopatra. Oh, maybe. Than Joan of Arc. Maybe. I mean, mm-hmm. I'd like, uh, actually, I bet Joan of Arc was not pleasant. Do you remember CBS had that show, Joan of Arcadia? Yes, I do. I never what watched was it. Was that a fever dream? <laughs> It actually existed. I never watched it, but yeah. Yeah. So Buddha, a guy named Buddha, says Amy was fucking hotter than Marilyn Monroe. Okay, dude, you clearly don't know who Marilyn Monroe (laughs) is. Stop. I mean, before Amy was ill, she was an attractive young woman, but like, she was not hotter than Marilyn Monroe. He probably thinks Madonna in the Vogue video, what what was it? Um, What was the video where she's dressed like Marilyn? Material Girl. He probably thinks that was the real Marilyn Monroe. Maybe, but even Madonna was hot as hell in that. I know. Jesus. Now Hope shows us the Galactics. (laughs) And thanks to the thanks to the sleuths on Reddit, I have a pretty exhaustive list of who's in that picture. Okay. (laughs) I didn't capture it all. Okay. So what we need to understand is there is the a Galactic A team. And (laughs) the main ambassadors of this are Saint Germain. Who sure. I did not look up. Is that a real saint? I don't know, but I'll look that up while you, you do keep quick, telling me. Quick Google. Yep. Okay. So the main ambassadors are some dude named Saint Germain and Robin Williams. I, I mean, I quite in love. I quite love. Um, Everybody quite loves love. Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm getting for Saint Germain is elderflower liquor. Liquor. Okay. All right. Oh, wait. What is Saint Germain known for? Hold on. Thank people okay. ask. St. Germain is known as the Ascended Master, who is the keeper of the sacred violet flame of healing. Okay. There we go. That makes more sense than Robin Williams. Probably gook. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yes. You have to understand, guys, I'm coming at this from a real skeptical point of view of all this spiritual shit. I'm sorry. It just... Uh... Yeah. I'm I'm a little more spiritual than you are, mm-hmm, but I will mm-hmm. say what I like best about St. Saint- Germain is the, li- the liquor. It's I nice am... and a little cocktail. I am not spiritual, really, at all. It's Mm -hmm. my own fault. But I am open-minded when it comes to this kind of stuff. And this has closed my mind. (laughs) Yeah, this is too far. This is 17 bridges too far. Yeah. Okay. So we have Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston. Okay? See if you can find a common thread amongst these people. Okay. Robin Williams, St. Germain, like I said. Steve Irwin, Crocodile Hunter. Gene Wilder. Now, Get his name out of your mouth. Now. Same with Robin Williams. Now. Yeah. John Lennon and Prince. Okay. Now everyone knows I am a amazingly huge John Lennon fan. John Lennon would totally be into some shit like this. Okay. <laughs> but not my precious John Denver. How dare you? How dare you, John Denver? I was gonna say, how did you how do you feel about the the John Lennon of it all? But John Denver's even too much for you. Okay. You, yeah, you know, John Lennon is he was a little he, wacko. He was experimental. He liked to do shit. John Lennon would have totally been into this bullshit. Yeah. He would have been like, oh, I'm a galactic. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. I'm a galactic. All I have to do is smoke weed all day and hang out. Mm-hmm. Cool, mm-hmm. I'm doing that anyway. Yeah. Prince also, I feel like, would have been on board here. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, I'm not saying, when I say they're on board, I don't mean they're like involved. I just right. mean like they would not have been offended. That's right. what I mean. Yeah. Um, Leonard Nimoy. Sure. Okay. Akira Kurosawa. Bill Hicks, Carrie Fisher, George Michael, David Bowie, Tupac, Chris Farley, Patrick Swayze. How dare you? <laughs> oh, no. Not Patrick Hasn't Swayze. Hasn't he suffered enough? Yeah, Jonathan seriously. Jonathan Winters, George Burns, Tim Conway, Francis Ford Coppola, John Candy, George Carlin, Donald Trump. Yeah, I was like, excuse me, what? Milk what? <sighs> No comment. Rodney Dangerfield, Patsy Cline, Kenny Rogers, Richard Pryor, Tom Petty, Aretha Franklin, Jim Croce, Carol Burnett, Fred Rogers, how dare you? Mr. Rogers would not have been down with a lick of this. Wayne Dyer, John Ritter, Kobe Bryant, Jim Henson, Walt Disney. Walt Disney would have been into this. (laughs) Walt Disney would have been, but not Jim Henson. No. 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 
Christopher Reeves, my birthday twin. How dare you? Yeah. Mm-mm. Bob Marley, Jerry Lewis, and Regis Philbin. So Jerry Lewis is my birthday twin. Oh, there you go. So our yeah. birthday twins are caught up in this. Yeah, great. Now, most of these people are dead, with the exception of, like, Donald Trump. Right. Uh, I don't understand. Did Leonard just, Nimoy's still alive. We, yeah, let's not kill just, people. There's a few people who are still alive. Did they yeah. just grab random celebrities? It feels like they did. There does not feel like there's a strong tie between any of these. I mean, there's like a swath of like musicians. There's mm-hmm. a swath of comedians. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mr. Rogers. I don't. I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. They do know that Robin Williams really wasn't from space, right? They know that Mark was not was work from work. Right. He was okay. not work right. from work. No, 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 okay. no. No. So Elvis. God, I love Mark and Mindy. Oh, I did too. Elvis yeah. is mom's son. Okay. Sure. Sure. And John Lennon is the commander of the ship. Of course. And um, or he's the commander of the main ship. Robin Williams is her right hand man. He is the big Robin Nacho. Robin Williams tells them to do a lot of shit. He really does. He really does. So now we meet Linda, a normal looking suburban woman. She is Amy's mom. And she says, um, you know, they didn't have a lot of money. They grew up pretty poor, but they didn't know they were poor. These kids, Mm -hmm. you know, similar, I'm sure to my upbringing, we didn't have a lot of money, but we didn't feel that at the time when we were little. Yeah. And in Amy's words, she says she grew up in the middle of the country, McPherson, Kansas, and she says Ferson. Okay, I would think McPherson. I would but... think Pherson too, but it's P H E R S O N. McPherson. Are you seeing as we're talking more and more about this cult that this weird light thing is happening I behind do. me? I do. You have okay. a weird orb of light behind you. We're just going to keep going. <laughs> what if it's the gal- if it's the galactics coming to get me? Please just hang up. Call Todd. Okay. okay, just All right. in case something happens. <laughs> Actually, take a screenshot of this because this is bonkers. Whatever is happening back okay. here. I mean, what's happening Hold is my window is open. Hold my window shade is open, but it's good. It's good. Getting the screenshot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, <laughs> um, Amy was seven. When her parents got divorced, she was the Mm -hmm. oldest of her and her sister. Her mom was 20 when she had her. Amy's also also telling us that McPherson, Kansas was Tornado Alley. Mm -hmm. And everywhere she lived, even in Dallas and Houston, where eh, they're not really known for their tornadoes, she was constantly haunted by tornadoes. Mm -hmm. That's what she tells us. So mom and dad get divorced, blah, blah, blah. Parents are fighting. But mom says, you know, we're relatively happy. Now we'll come back to that. Put a pin in that. Yeah. In 1998, Amy's born in 1975, by the way. So she's only two years older than me. In 1998. She's two years younger than I am. Yeah. Amy goes into management at a Dallas McDonald's. Now, I worked worked at McDonald's. McDonald's. So have I. And I worked Mm -hmm. at McDonald's management. Okay. I was not in management, but I 100% could tell you the name of three managers I worked with over my course of my career at McDonald's, who would 100% drop ecstasy and start cult. <laughs> okay, fair. Okay. Fair, right. yeah. So she was moving on up. She was getting her own store. She was great at it because she knew how to motivate people. And now we have Amy loaded. I mean, the audio from this, she's slurring so bad, it's very, barely, yeah. you know, comprehensible. She says, I took ecstasy. I wanted to see what the hoopla was assisting me with. Right. Okay. I was like, holy shit. I was rolling, rolling, rolling in waves of happiness. And I was like, is this real life that people are keeping from me? I was like, okay. Girl. <laughs> she reminded me of the little kid with after the dental thing. Like, is this real yes. life? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Tara, Amy's sister, is like, she and this is you know this goes out to all the little sibs out there Mm -hmm. i see you we see Mm -hmm. these older sibs doing this weird bullshit Mm -hmm. she was like you know amy started to get a little weird i could see her starting to get like spiritual and she was saying shit but then it just got real weird (laughs) and (laughs) she started hanging out on all these aol websites and i wrote do you remember geo cities was it geo cities sure as fuck do remember geo cities that's yeah. what she was hanging out on did you oh, know abso- yes yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. 
Create your own little website quickly. Yep. You got a Windows 98 happening at this point. Mm -hmm. Windows. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say something really controversial. Okay. Not really, actually, if you're in IT. Windows 98 SE, one of the best operating systems of all time. Really? It was so solid. It was so solid. All right. Well, I don't know what happened after that. I don't know either. (laughs) Okay. So Amy and Amerith meet on lightworkers.org. Right. Amanda, Amerith. you may be wondering what a light worker is. You tell, please. A light Share worker with me. is someone who wants to tune into the higher vibrations of nature. Of course. There's a lot of talk about vibrations in this There's community. There's a lot of vibrations. And also, um, now that I have begun my uh, married at first sight journey, there's also a lot of vibing. <laughs> There's vibing and there's vibrations. Do these things have anything in common? <laughs> or do these are these things related? I don't know. I okay. don't know. I don't know either. That's a good question. Yeah. So Amrith is he's a character. Let me let me just set the I'll, stage of Amrith. I'll say a few things about Amrith. Amrith is one of those people that he could be 35. He mm-hmm. could be 70. I'm going closer to 70. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he's got a full gray beard like Santa. He's mm-hmm. got the handlebar mustache. He has no teeth, which I'm not judging. Dental care is expensive in this country. I don't, you know, judge that. Um, he seems gentle. He does. He seems kind. He does. And that's all I have to say about him right now. Okay. And he seems a little cuckoo magoo. He's a little bit, but he's harmless. I feel like he's harmless. He's one of the least harmful people in this world, mm-hmm. for sure. For like, sure. In but he got her started. In terms of somebody you could meet on the internet and run away with, he was the he was the best, the least worst option. He was the least worst option, yes. particularly of all the people she wound up um, hooking up with. Yeah, yeah. But he's also the one who told her she was mother god i feel yeah but he kind of says it started to get away from him at that point okay well sure but he in 2006 she runs away with him okay and they i don't know i wrote they get married but i don't think they actually got married they just kind of got together yeah i mean there was some sort of ceremony where they held hands but i have a feeling that there was not the proper paperwork filed with the authorities yeah and he he says they're twin flames i know I know. Okay. So he says, you know, it was beautiful. Like we were immersed in nature. We see them looking at cloud spaceships yelling, I love you people. Right. All the clouds are spaceships. Have you noticed this? It didn't. As long as they're like weird shaped clouds, they became spaceships. And Amrith is like so excited. He's like, I can't believe that there's all these people in these clouds saying hello to us. He's so, he is so convinced this is happening. It's a Notice lot of drug the language supply. change here because yeah. he's saying we would talk about ascension, we would talk about obtaining a higher vibrational consciousness, and Amy thought it was important to put this info out there. So we created the Galactic Free Press, and we became Father and Mother God. Now, all up to this point, this is all harmless. This is absolutely harmless. Mm-hmm. This is just some weirdos putting yeah. out a, a free weird yeah. paper. Cool. Hope. Hope. Uh, okay. Hope. I have real problems with this woman. Remind me, was Hope the blonde or the brunette? No, Aurora's the blonde. Okay. Hope is the brown haired girl. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got it. They're both, yeah. they're both wealthier white yes. women from Florida. Yes. They okay. absolutely did not come from poverty no. at all. No. no. They they were bored. And mm-hmm. they, they were bored. Us. Okay. Yeah. So um, Hope says... Amy always knew there would be a 3D father God, you know, but he was coming. We see videos and Amy is starting, Amy is starting to call herself mother God. Amrith is like, she really kind of took this on. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. You and and I can start calling each other mother God, but both of us will be laughing while we do it. Yeah. She's now like, oh, I'm mother God. Yeah. Period. But I just noticed it was interesting to see their language because they're all like love and peace and peace on earth and love. But then once we see Amy alone, mm-hmm. she's starting with this shit like all material stuff was created in an illusionary dream. Too many have too little and too few have too much. 
pay the controllers, work hard, and die. The federal government is owned by the people, not the corporate. Like, it's starting to devolve yes. into this uh, incendiary rhetoric. And yeah. it's, getting, it's getting dark. It is getting dark. Uh, yeah. I feel like she's... I feel like some of the sovereign citizen folks... Yes. ...would enjoy this. I agree. I agree. Again, harmless right now. Harmless right now. Okay. So the message becomes the system is not working and you have to exit the matrix. And I don't know. I mean, Keanu Reeves couldn't even get out of the matrix. How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? He was in a movie and had special effects and he couldn't get out. <laughs> so L says, the internet is the web of lights. And Mother God has spent, spread the truth in different ways. As Marilyn, she spread it through the movies. Pe guys, hmm. people are saying this with dead straight faces. This is a hundred. Mm -hmm. I, I am saying this as sure as I'm wearing a green and white sweater. Like it is just fact. Fact. As Joan of Arc, she spread it through the revolution, and now she's spreading it through the internet. And, you know, that's our tool of the day. So we're using it. Is. Makes sense. We meet Michael Silver, who's really Miguel, and he becomes Archangel, Archangel Michael. And right. he comes out from Brooklyn, and he whisks her away, and he's got... The, the skills to be setting up some bank accounts and stuff. And nobody's he's, paying attention to that happening in the background. He's got the skills to, you know, go to the bank and say, I'd like mm -hmm. an account, which mm -hmm. is, is a challenge. I understand. Which is yeah. more than some of these people have. That is true. It's so funny. This is yet another one where Todd was coming in and out and in and out. And he keeps, it seems like every time he came in, we were talking about Robin Williams and he's like, mm -hmm. Ryan Robin Williams. I'm like, I don't know. We and don't then he's know. like, He's like, who's this Miguel guy? Because he was in for the last second. I'm like, oh, he's the Archangel Michael. He's like, oh, of course. Okay. Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So with Michael, Michael believed Amy cured his cancer. So mm -hmm. he was like all into her. And he whisks her away to Mount Shasta, California. Now, later, reporter Mary tells us a lot of these kooky crowds go to Mount Shasta because they believe that's a portal. Yeah. Mount Shasta mm -hmm. is, is, mm -hmm. is, a, is a known spot for weirdness. Now, this is where... Her followers start to come to her mm -hmm. at this house. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful house. Amanda, I have so many questions. How did they afford it? Who bought it? Did Miguel right. buy it? We right. Yeah. There's a lot of things of, I don't know how they were funding themselves. Well, we learn that they start making money. They do, but, but enough. How do they have money at this point? And enough to do all the things that they're doing? Oh, I think so. Okay. They're, char they're charging okay. a lot of money for these. That's true. These spiritual and readings mm -hmm. and things. Yeah, I don't know, but that house was really nice. It was very nice. And it was mm -hmm. in Northern California. Like, it yeah. was, you know, wasn't in Scranton, Pennsylvania. No. So, now we meet Andrew. He was a former member, and he says in, like, 2011, 2012, he was on opioids and got caught up in conspiracy theories and pretty much went down a QAnon rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And Amy started doing videos around that same time with conspiracy theories, and that's how he found her. And he said he started having dreams about her. Of course. And then in a private chat, she's like, I'm having dreams about you, too. And she's like, you need to get out here. Like, right. And we need here. to bang. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Basically. Now, he arrives and he says when he got there, Amy and Michael had been doing shrooms for 36 hours. Right. Whew. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, at some point you go, well, of course, none of these people's brains are working properly. They have all done we, so many they, drugs. They were doing so long. We'll get there. Yeah. So they gave him enough to kill a small child, essentially, right? He's like, no one should survive the amount of shrooms I did the moment I got there. So he passes out. He comes to and she's like, let's bang. Now he says, I was not attracted to her. Mm -hmm. But I pushed through. He managed to push through. How brave. How brave. How and brave. He, he says he did grow to love her. But then he says she was a little bit lazy. A Does little bit sexually? No, I think she didn't do anything all day. Oh, okay. All right. M maybe she was maybe she was just a pillow princess. I don't know, but I I, I think she just didn't do anything. I have to disclose something to you. Okay. I have someone in my outside circle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who became a raging alcoholic. Like Okay. Bottles and bottles, fifths of whiskey, like two a day, like okay. bad. Okay? okay. Was an older person, probably in their 50s when they started this. And and I don't mean that's old. I just mean no. older than they weren't 20. And um, when Amy talks, 
and Amy says stuff later in the documentary, there oh. is such a similarity. Ugh. I can't eat. Like, it is so triggering for me. Ugh. And what ended up happening was this person's family had to, you know, get them into yeah. a facility against sure. their will. And they found out that this person had a blocked carotid artery. It was so blocked that oxygen was not getting to their brain. And they were, li- it was mimicking the signs of, we th- all thought it was alcohols induced Alzheimer's. Right. That's how bad it was. Oh, wow. And I, so I have seen this firsthand. Somebody right. bonkers from drinking too much. I would, I feel like this is what happened to her. Okay. Did the did the silver help a hundred percent? Yeah, but I feel like the alcohol was the main issue here, yeah. and the drugs. Anyway, okay. So when I hear her talking, it's like, Ugh. so all right. He's getting at this point. Andrew's getting seven hundred dollars a month in unemployment, and he's donating or seven dollars a week, and he's donating it to keep food and weed on their table. Priorities. They were high, he says, from the minute they got up to the minute they went to bed. They burned their brains out. Yeah. yeah they burned their they brains. did. Weed is not addictive. It's not problematic. It's it's fine if yeah. used in moderation. Yeah. Yeah. Like if everything the, else. If the first thing you're doing every day of your life is waking and baking, it's a problem. It's a problem. Okay. So he had a background in web design and marketing, and he took this whole shit to a new level. Because mm-hmm. they were going by... First contact ground crew team.com rolls right off the tongue. You would never forget it. Why are you doing this? Is the Ken house in the Barbie movie? Yes, yes. So it's Dojo, Mojo Jojo yeah. Casa House. Yes, yes. yes. Um, Andrew rebranded them to Love Has One and it snowballed from there. He says Amy was in charge of the show, but Michael was in charge of the money. Mm-hmm. Again, no one's keeping an eye on that situation. They start scamming using websites to sell healings, even brain surgeries. Yeah. You- I, I'm speechless. I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. I'm not buying a brain surgery off the internet. <laughs> no tip. Do not buy brain surgery off the internet. So basically, Andrew's like, they were making a ton of money and he shows like, They show PayPal receipts coming in. Mm -hmm. People are sending them thousands of dollars. Yeah. Cashing out their 401ks, the whole nine yards. Oh, yeah. Andrew's like, I was not super comfortable with this. Like, she was starting to get super dark. She was drinking every night, drinking way too much. He says, there were moments where I'd get her to admit, like, this was all cuckoo magoo. Right. But it was fleeting. She would just, you know, forget about it. Eventually, Andrew and Michael start to butt heads. They make they make Andrew an ultimatum, or they give Andrew an ultimatum, like, shut up or leave. He decides mm-hmm. to leave. That's it. He's gone. We do see footage of them all sitting around watching Mrs. Doubtfire and smoke. They're always smoking weed. Always smoking weed. And, yeah. And, I mean, if you're thinking that Robin Williams is your primary, like, person mm-hmm. in, of the Galactics, mm-hmm. the one who's telling you all the things, is Mrs. Doubtfire the film you're going to choose to watch over and over again? No. No. It's no. going to be Dead Poet Society. Of course. Come and Goodwill Hunting. Challenge me. Forget it. No. Yeah. Yeah. So Faith is a spiritual healer. She shows up. She's a dingbat as well. I, I can't with these people. I did like her accent though. I did too. But she's she's, she's a dingbat. Go. Yeah. yeah. She's still she, in this. She brings the scam into a whole new level with, yeah, uh, with the spiritual healing. Robin Williams tells them, guys, we can grow this. We can do something here. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, sorry. Guys, this is Robin <laughs> Williams speaking. Oink, oink. We can work, work. We can we can make something here. Okay. Do you think they had like a speaker where like Robin Williams' voice would just come out? I have so many questions about the logistics of this. Like, where is know. Robin Williams' voice coming? Because is she just hearing it in her head? Because- Are they all hearing it in their head? It seems like it's coming through Amy. Right. But other people were like, well, Robin Williams told us to do this. Dumb and Dumber seem to be getting it too. (laughs) Yeah. I don't understand. I don't know. So we get a little bit of the backstory from the followers. Um, Aurora, Hope, they're like little rich white girls from Florida. Aurora went to to law school. Mm Mm-hmm. 
you know what, Amanda? Better her here than in a court of law affecting someone's life in a real way. That's true. <laughs> it's true. Yikes. All all uh, all people who need criminal defense are like marked safe from Aurora. Marked safe from Aurora. <laughs> Um, so as you as you would expect, some of them have tragic backstories. Of okay. course. Um, Aaron, we meet Aaron. Oof. Aaron's the one who <laughs> burned the cabin down. Yes. And she, um, <laughs> guys, whoa. <laughs> she brings, now I'm going to get irate about this. She brings her four fucking children with her. Into I this know. Mess. What the hell? At least Amy's kids weren't traipsing around with her. I know. I know. Thank God. Um, Buddha tells us he went down the street, cleaned out his bank accounts, 401k, took it all, brought to mom. So we have this live stream of everyone arriving at this cabin. Right. And it's just being live streamed constantly. Yeah. There's They're, just a camera. These idiots put everything on film. Oh, yeah. Thank God they did. Just like those twin flame morons. Yes. Thank God. So they just start live streaming and everybody's super fucked up and they're all like just drinking, 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 smoking weed. I mean, it's crazy. Doing shrooms, doing ecstasy. Like I, like I said to Jake, you know, if you think that the, you know, the twin flame folks are dumb, love is one is going to hold my beer. Yeah. I can, yeah. I can out, out dumb you all over the place. Aurora says mom loved to use her tools of joy, alcohol, marijuana. Mm -hmm. because they're not bad for you amy if you use them as medicines and tools right right right, right. well aren't we all using them as medicine That's tools? Good point. so mom's mom got this was too much for mom and her energy exhausted mm -hmm. her of course and of course. so she starts going nuts or as i like to call it having an episode an alcohol induced <laughs> episode and then she has to go pass out now then john henry shows up and at first, I was like, he might be my twin flame. But okay. then... He was I'm dirty in just the right I, way for you. I, I Yeah, yeah. He's... Yeah. And everybody... Some of some of, some of the backdoor friends who know me best were like, mm, are you sure it's not Father Jason? No. <laughs> no. 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 He's way he's too, too scary. That broke down Steven Seagal is way too scary for me. He's too um, scary. No. No. Mm -mm. no uh, mm -mm. Father Multiverse, I think, is much more your speed. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yep. So he's a veteran and he says, you know, don't tell me you didn't notice there's something fucky on this planet. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you know what? There is something fucky there's on this planet. There's a lot fucky on this planet. I just don't think it's... <laughs> yeah, you're part of the problem. It's you. You're the problem. It's you. <laughs> he says he laid next to mom and he became the next father god. Of course. And he told mom, like, science could not explain you. No. Then he not. says something that I have heard over the last few days, two or three times, and I would like to address. Okay. Okay. I had resonated with it is not the proper sentence. No. It is not the proper use of the word resonate. No. Resonate applies to an object. So something resonates with you. You don't mm -hmm. resonate on something. You no. don't resonate. No. The object resonates. Right. Exactly. Okay. I just want to get that out there because this is the second. This is third, important language. It's the second or third documentary or show. I can't remember that I've heard. Resonated. I have resonated with it. No, oh, okay. you have not. Nope. So they start talking about mom's ascension now. Now we start to hear this kind of talk. Now, Debbie, who is Hope's mom and keeps calling her Ashley and I'm here for it, mm -hmm. is like Ashley just up and left. I realized yeah. it was cult right away. Yeah. I started following the live stream and I'm not understanding one fucking word they're saying. <laughs> no, because none of us are. <laughs> and keep Debbie in mind because she is going to cause some problems down the road. Yeah. I like Debbie a lot. I like Debbie a lot too. And Debbie I like says, Debbie mother that, better than Amy's mother. Yes. Yeah. Debbie says this was a recipe for predators. Like mm -hmm. the girls are pretty. They're dumb. She doesn't say mm -hmm. they're dumb, but I'm saying they're dumb. Yeah. Okay. They also love Trump. And they love QAnon. And they said, this Q is really mom. Right. Q is mm -hmm. mom, which, mm -hmm. hey, I mean, people have been wondering who Q is for years now. I've watched yep. a number of documentaries on that situation. Yep. Uh, I didn't know it was this woman, but here we are. But she's dead now, but she's ascended. So maybe, yeah, I don't yeah. understand. I don't either. 
episode two is basically like they're they're introducing us to Father God, who is Jason mm. Castillo. Castillo, right? Castillo, yeah. Oh. When we meet him for one fleeting second, I was like, who's this? Because he has no shirt on and he's devouring a hot cheesy piece of pizza. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> See, the moment he came on screen, my blood ran cold i was like oh this dude is not good oh, it didn't take long it was like it's a middle second that okay. i was like i don't know if i was attracted to him or the pizza it might have been the pizza throwing it, was, it off maybe it wasn't great looking pizza though just saying well it had that string cheesiness that you don't yeah. see a lot anymore okay <laughs> you don't see a lot anymore <laughs> he says <laughs> like wood sided station wagons you don't see those a lot anymore you don't see the stringy pizza situation okay go ahead Jason Castile, Father God. Father God. He says his 60th job in the Earth realm was running a blockbuster in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And he was doing that for $9 an hour. And I just want to say $9 an hour. This is corporate America's fault. Yes, this is, is this is corporate America's fault. McDonald's and Blockbuster, pay your fucking managers more. Right. And they won't have to start goddamn cults. <laughs> Um, McDonald's can pay relatively well for now, managers. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, maybe then. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't making much money, but I was also in college. So like the 11 right. bucks an hour I was making felt like right. a ton of money. Right. Well, they weren't even paying him that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like, they promised me 50K a year, but didn't come in. And I said, fuck you. And I left. Good on you, Father God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take the man <laughs> down by leaving I Blockbuster. I the method maybe- that came in. I'm not sure when that happened. Maybe he is the reason Blockbuster went defunct. It could be. It could be. be. So he says he already knew the Matrix Matrix was real. And guys, I can't describe him to you in any way that's going to capture his his weirdness. You've got to watch him. Yeah, he's he's He's, got this really weird effect. Affect. He's long hair. There's a he's broke down Steven Seagal. He has broke down Steven Seagal. That's that's pretty mm-hmm. darn accurate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like if Steven Seagal went on meth, lost some weight. Yeah. Right. And got um, really crazy. Got some really crazy teeth happening. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just so- started talking, calling himself Father God. Mm-hmm. So he says he already knew the Matrix was real. Of course. But when he saw Mother God, that was it. Like he was like, okay, I'm I've been right this whole time. Yeah, he has on what he's calling Amanda a GPS bracelet, which he's on tether. You're on <laughs> he's tether. What are you doing? <laughs> We've watched enough Love After Lockup, my friend. We know how this works. He's on tether. You're on tether. You have to plug into a wall on a regular basis. We understand. He's a real sweet guy who who calls women whores, <laughs> with, with just with ease and laughs about it. Right. So we see him arriving and we learn that he was just kind of picked up off the streets. He was, of course. he was a homeless guy in Vegas doing mm-hmm. meth and they picked him up and brought him to this home. Yes. Okay. They, they found, they found a broken person and were like, mm-hmm. this guy's God. He's coming mm-hmm. with us. Mm-hmm. Reporter Mary says Jason had a long rap sheet, but it was nothing violent or crazy. Just misdemeanory things Mm -hmm. you know breaking and entering you know that yeah and drugs and shit like yeah yeah so jason says when he got there he was giddy because he saw the most beautiful girl just directing creation and he's directing as he's oh yeah he is so so animated the the maestro like he's just (laughs) he's animated he's i wish you guys could see me yeah this is is (laughs) actually what amy looks like (laughs) It's one of those, one of those things that you see at car dealerships. That's like, what even That's really what you looked like. Kind of what he looks like too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, he comes in and he starts fixing things. And Amy offhandedly says to him one day, "Like you're brilliant," and he loses his goddamn fucking mind. <laughs> He's like. Oh my God, you're right. I am brilliant. Why didn't you ever tell me this? Right. Why? why mm-hmm. I took God to tell me just how mm-hmm. brilliant I am. Only she could see it, Amy, because yes. of her godlike status. Yeah. So suddenly he gets all alpha. Oh, and he's like, I'm oh. fucking here now. Forget uh-huh. it. He takes over this in a real gnarly way. Yes, he does. 
Elle says once Jason, oh, my twin flame, John, gets shut out. Yeah, bye. He's gone. Good, goodbye. Yeah. He's, he, and John kind of says, like, because he's so sweet, he's like, you know, I always knew I would be the second to last Father God, that there would right. be, there would be, There'd an be another one, the real in. one. Mm-hmm. So Amy's like, hey, John, you're going to be multiverse father. Okay, father yeah. multiverse. Of course. They're sitting on the bed. Amy's Is this related to the hat. Marvel multiverse? <clears throat> That's what I was wondering. Yeah, I was wondering too. So they're sitting on a bed and Amy's wearing a Santa hat and she announces <laughs> Jason is the master of atoms with me. And he calls Amy his twin flame. So mm-hmm. here we have it again. Yeah. Elle says once Jason became father, he went nuts with power. Yes. And he started bossing people around. He drank. He ate six raw eggs every morning. That's the least offense, in my opinion. It's the least offense. But when he said, when they said that, I was like, mmm. now I know people do that. It just grosses me out. I don't know if you picked this up, but I did. Okay. He's blasting like this industrial heavy metal music, right? Janelle would like this music. I think Janelle would be all into this guy. He's got pecs, kind right? Of. You know, she's into pecs and six pack mm-hmm, abs and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know. Yeah. German hate metal or whatever. So he goes on rants about vulgar displays of power. And I heard a child cry out in the background. Mm. And I'm like, there are fucking kids here. Of course there are. To me, this is criminal. Yeah, this is criminal. As soon as, kid, as soon as people are, I mean, I don't know. Are any of these people really consenting? Because I don't think they are of sound mind and body, but I whatever. I guarantee you this is Aaron's kids. Yeah. This is her. <laughs> these are her by the way, Amy also has an evil laugh. Amy yes, she like, does. <laughs> it's so terrifying. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm sorry for all of you who had to hear that. I need you to do her laugh more often. I needed that. <laughs> it was like wild. <laughs> so, all right. So there are kids there. Yeah. There are fucking kids there. Fucking terrible. <sighs> okay. So he would he would get all wound up. He would drink a ton of shit, and then he would disappear and go out and do some meth. This was sure. Father God. Hey everyone, stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. John says he tried talking to Mom about this, but Mom was like, "No, no, no, no." Jason's Father God, your Father Multiverse, shut the fuck up. Followers say, "Oh, this was typical Mom. She attracted the loonies so that right. she could fix them. You know, whatever." Of Mom needed to do it. We go back to 19, uh, 1995. We see Amy real real intensely singing some You Were Meant For Me by Jewel. Weren't we all in 1995? We sure were. I was mm-hmm. near you seeing her at Montage Mountain at oh, Lilith Fair. There you go. Yeah. And she was hanging out in bars. She got pregnant. She had the baby who was cold. Then she had Maddie. So she was like 22. She had two kids. She's dumping them on mom, Linda, quite a bit. And mom's mm-hmm. like, you know what? I did, you know, I didn't ask questions. I enjoyed spending time with my grandkids. Guys weren't very nice to Amy. She didn't really have it well, have it safe, have it good, you know. Right. So then she says the final guy she met at a bar, she got pregnant. It was not a good or I'm getting the sense it wasn't a safe relationship. I think Amy has been abused by many a man. Yes. Yes. And her sister says, I called her up. I told her, come live with me. You know, she mm-hmm. she refused. Then this was fucking bonkers. They had a birthday dinner out at a restaurant. Amy gets up and leaves in the middle of it and Mm -hmm. is never heard from again. No, she's just peaced out. Mom's like, we didn't think this was a permanent thing. You know, like we thought she'd be back and no, never came back. Never came back. Mm -mm. So in 2018, meth is getting a hold of Father God. Of course it is. And... Uh, mom is freaking out on him. She's screaming at him in the basement. Elle's like, it was a nightmare. It was like living with parents that were fighting all the time. Because they were. They're all hanging out in tents in the backyard. And I just wrote, imagine these are your fucking neighbors. Imagine these are your neighbors. Guys, I know that a lot of people feel in some areas of our life that there's government overreach. There is not government overreach when it comes to keeping our, our neighborhoods free of stuff like this. I always say this. Yeah. With people, why do we have regulations? Why do we have car inspections? This is why. Because people why. would be doing this shit. Left to their own devices, people will do the least. Yes. Yes. And not care about their impact on anybody else. 
No, no, not everybody, but not there everybody. will be people like yeah. this popping up in your neighborhoods. So thank yeah. God for those regulations that your township has. <laughs> yeah. All right. So they move mom to Oregon because Father God's energy was just too much. Mm-hmm. So they had to get away from him. They were and all over the damn place. They were. And I was not surprised that this yeah. ended in Oregon. I really yeah. wasn't. No, um, I wasn't either. So they, they split up basically. And mom says, if you can get your shit together, you'll you'll find us, Father God. Mm-hmm. So they go to Oregon. They're camping for like six weeks. Um, reporter Mary says the rest of the crew came back to Crestone. And here they are smoking out in public. And we're in a burn ban. We're in a, you know, like a drought crisis. I'm right. Thinking, this is this is what you're finding offensive. This is the least people? of your worries. Is the the smoking okay? Oh. All right. Okay. All right. Sure. Um, reporter Mary says, you know, these people would hang out in cafes for hours for the free Wi-Fi, and no one really thought of it because we accept weird people around here. Like it's fine. It's fine. Mm-hmm. And you know, this is where like I struggle too because it. May- I grew up Roman Catholic, mm-hmm. and to an observer, that might look like a cult. Sure. Right? Like, when you boil Roman Catholicism down, when you boil Catholicism down, yeah, there's an old man in the sky. He's telling you what to do. He's telling you what to do. You can, when you when you die, he takes you up into that place in the sky or he puts you in a fiery pit of hell. Right. You can talk to him through his mother. Like, yep. his son here. rose from the dead. Sure. I mean, you know. So, I always say... Hey, whatever you believe, you believe. Right. But then you get into, does it hurt other people? And that's that's where I have a problem. If these people just wanted to like sit around and say that Robin Williams is telling them what to do and they're not bugging anybody else. 100% fine. I don't really care. Yep. Yep. But that's not what was happening. If these people want to do weird shit in their house Mm -hmm. and they live in the middle of nowhere and they don't have any neighbors they're bothering, fine. Fine, but, but it's like when you start intruding on the people around you, yeah. I have problems with that. Dragging kids into it. It's the kid part that's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, in Oregon, we have footage of them camping in a trailer in Snake River, Oregon. And Amy's laugh is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can't do it. It hurts my throat. And she's just looking worse and worse and worse. She's drunk all the time. All the time. All the time. Jason returns and you can tell there's mixed emotions in the crowd Mm -hmm. in the group because Amy seems happy. The rest of them don't No, Cause I think he was a nightmare. He was a nightmare. And Amy was so incapacitated between drugs and booze. Yeah. And anorexia. Like she was so sick and he's a lunatic. Yeah. Knocking around this house. It's not good. He he's may, an evil, scary guy. He's a scary... Guys, he is a scary fucking guy. Yeah. He made it 500 miles with 11 cents in his pocket. And Congratulations. He wrote, on a, he wrote on a napkin, Father chose love over meth. Good for you. And I wonder, like, like Mikey and Chelsea with their napkin on Love After Lockup, like... Aww. Like, is Amy, did Amy frame the napkin that says father chose love over meth? Is it like, well, this, I would say this is like the Bartlett for American napkin, but you don't know about that yet. No, That's I don't the know West Wing that. thing. But okay. I want Mikey and Chelsea to be okay. I know. I actually really just want Mikey to be okay. Me too. Yeah. So he falls in love with Oregon. He says it was a reset for them. He proposes. They get a house. Then I... On July 7, 2018, the house burns down. Of course it does. <laughs> and Aaron says, hee, 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 I burned the house down, saging it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, this woman, this woman, guys, this woman, she was, she was saging the house and she burnt it down. Mm-hmm. I've saged things before. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot to take from that to burning a house down. Yeah, just say it. Yeah. So they go back to Cresto. Michael finds them a house. It's it's rough, but they, they all pitch in. They fix it up together. They call it Mission House. They renovate there, it. It's there. There's not a wall in this house that is not covered in some crazy ass paint. It's yeah. Yeah. nuts mm-hmm. looking. Mm-hmm. It looks like if you got like a completely sugared up seven-year-old girl who's real into unicorns and rainbows and said, yes. have at it. Yes. Decorate yes. this home. Yes. 
it, it's, it's crazy. It's bonkers. Yeah. So I do want to put a little trigger warning up here because we're going to get into the portion where we're talking about food control, food yeah. issues, body dysmorphia, stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, you might want to skip ahead 10 minutes or so if that kind of stuff gets, although it is kind of drizzled throughout. So, yeah, yeah just hard there. Too. Okay. So now mom is training Aurora to communicate with the oracles and the galactics. Uh, I'm sorry. She's training her as an oracle, Aurora and Hope, to, to talk to the communicate galactics. with the galactics, mostly at Robin Williams. Of course, because okay. he's the head galactic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mom only ate what the galactics told her to. And her weight at some point was 100 pounds. Yeah. And she appeared to not be like a four foot nine woman. No. 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 She was so skinny. It was bad. It was triggering for me. Like, I had a hard time with it. Yeah, I had a hard time seeing her that. Yeah. Skinny. The Galactics told Aurora and Hope to live stream every morning. Mm -hmm. So now we they did. begin We begin the dumb and dumber portion of the show. <laughs> These morons. I want to just bang their heads together a few times. They're hilarious, though, because they're so damn earnest. I know. I know. They're crazy. I know. They're so earnest. I know. So we meet Sarah. She was a former member. She's got red hair. She's sitting in what looks like, I don't know, a murder torture basement. I don't know where yeah. she is. <laughs> a weird house. And she was sick and she couldn't figure out why. And she had a ton of medical debt because America. Right. And so she booked a session with these weirdos. And through that, she grew a bond. And she eventually headed out there. And she Literally, said, this woman needed cheap health care. So she wound up here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, America. This is good what job. this is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good job, so America. She says it was it was great at first. It was like boot camp for spirituality. And sure. she says, but Michael controlled the money, and we don't spend money on food, right? Because why would you do that? Yes. So they start asking people for money for things for Amy. They had two hundred twenty thousand dollars at this point. Sarah says Amy taught that the less you ate, the higher vibration you would be. Again, going back to the person that I know in my outer circle, that was, she never ate. That mm. was a thing. Never ate. Nope. Because when you're, when you're like really bad into alcoholism, I feel like you don't eat. The mm. alcoholics I've known in my life have yeah. not been big eaters. Um, Michael, uh, oh, I'm sorry. She was asking Michael for money. He said, no, the less sleep, the less food you need, the better. Mm -hmm. This was their mantra. The two things sure. we know nourish your body. The they two are things that everyone needs, mm -hmm. sleep and food. Great. Mm -hmm. This is healthy. We have footage of Amy saying, Robin calls me anorexic now. <laughs> 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 like, oh, Jesus Christ. So we oh, learned. Funny, <laughs> God. We learned that Amy has a history of an eating disorder and her sister's or like. she does. Okay. Now. I can't tell you all the ways in which this triggered me where mm -hmm. perfectly thin sister, perfectly thin mom start talking about what was wrong with Amy's, with Amy's body. Wait. Yes. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, even, even the name, even needed, the name. I needed to stand up and walk around the room 10 times <laughs> and then sit back down. Yeah. I understood. Um, here's the thing. Pro tip. If yeah. somebody's shoving a camera in your face or not, even if it's just a private conversation, they're like, what do you think went wrong with your sister's weight? Don't answer. Here's okay. an answer you can give. I don't, I prefer not to talk about my sister's body. Right. Period. Or I saw photos of her and she didn't look well. Yeah. 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 We don't need to get into her history. I'm talking about yeah. the history part. Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. So. Amy, her sister's like, she had an emotional relationship with food. You know, she hid ding-dongs in her room. She was a teenager and had ding-dongs in her room. Who did it? Who amongst us? Right. Who amongst who, us? Who amongst us? Mm -hmm. Mom says, I went on Nutrisystem with her. This was this was so 80s. This was so 80s I and went, 90s. I, in the 80s, I too was put on a Nutrisystem journey. I understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom did it to support her. Mom lost weight amy lost weight and mom says amy became more secure and realized she was beautiful oh fuck <sighs> you <laughs> fucking a man because you know she was so fat right she was hiding all that beauty right under Whatever. her back her 
Remember, Sister, we're all staying fat to protect ourselves from Keith Raniere. That's what's right, happening. Right, right, right. Just like I keep a bunch of Christmas trees around to protect myself from Cody Brown. That's right. So, I'm just, I'm just a little meatball in a Christmas tree forest. <laughs> Uh, we're going to hell. so jason is just sitting around playing guitar and i wrote you're trying to tempt me but it's not working no you <laughs> cannot go there working. not working Mm-mm. at any point you had said more than that first millisecond of the pizza no. that you found him attractive <laughs> no. i was going to grab steph and we were going to have a no. full-on intervention <laughs> no i do not okay. find this man attractive at all good good um, Sarah says they would spend days just sitting in Amy's room listening to her talk, and they're writing everything down too. Oh, of course, Hope, aka Ashley, is writing everything down. Well, I mean, if so, God's talking to you, why wouldn't you write everything mm-hmm, down? Mm-hmm. Uh, Amy is transmuting all the negative energy from the planet. Yes, yes, I mm-hmm, did send you that mm-hmm. screenshot. Um, they all have bad childhoods. I noticed Amy is coughing constantly. Mm-hmm. She's always coughing. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Yeah. Aaron, he, Aaron, her mother <laughs> comes and takes those kids away. Thank God. She Thank shows God. up and takes the kids away. Hero. Aaron's yeah. mother's a hero. Thank God. Debbie, Hope's mom, is like, I, I don't know what happened here. Like, <laughs> I, I had this kid, Ashley. She seemed normal. We got divorced. We sold the house. But, like, we moved in with my parents. It's not like we were out on the streets. Right. So Debbie decides to start a group. To stop them. And Hope is screaming about it on the live stream. And oh, yeah. Like, Fuck you, Debbie. Fuck it. That was a little entertaining. I was here for that. <laughs> I, was there, I was here for her 12-year-old temper tantrum. When you're fighting with your mom through your live stream, I'm here for that. Okay? I, I want to see that. <laughs> Talking about the galactics. <laughs> So Debbie even says, like, Amy seemed innocent at first, but then she started getting a little crazy. Just a little Mm cray-cray. Just Mm -hmm. a little. Mom starts using, we see this footage of Mom using Robin Williams as a tyrannical presence. (laughs) (laughs) He's everywhere. I mean, I don't know about... When year did Robin Williams die? Hold on here. When did Robin Williams die? Hold on. Let's see. Because I'm wondering what how much of this he was dead for. I don't know. Let's see. Robin Williams. Uh, oh, he died in 2014. God, it was that long ago? So yeah. It was 10 years ago. Yeah. 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 I would have said it was like five years ago. Max. I know. Wow. Okay. I know. Okay. okay. Anyway, so yeah, he was dead through all this. Yeah. Okay, so she starts treating her followers like shit. We see her screaming. Mm -hmm. We see this tirade she's going on about she wanted chicken parm, not meatballs. And again, real bad. Yeah. Um, Jason, her fighting all the time. We have footage of Jason berating my twin flame, John, who's just, you know, being Mr. Innocent there. How dare you? Then the producers. Other multiverse. Leave him alone. Yep. Then the producers ask Jason, when did her health start to decline? And he says, when I returned, I brought the darkness with me. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna speed up because we're an hour in here and I'm still on episode two. <laughs> so um Aurora says mom was dead. okay, so mom starts to get sick. Yeah. Jason has to carry her. Sarah's saying she was paralyzed, but it was clearly liver failure. Sarah remembers the one who's outside of the cult. Yeah. And all- she's taking colloided silver like it's her job. Thank you. I don't even have that here. I probably yeah. did, but I skipped it. Yes. Yeah. So they are making the silver, the colloidal mm-hmm. silver. They're making and selling it. it. I would not trust these idiots to make me an egg. No. They're selling it to like people people online. So that's part of their business. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like it's again, a tincture. Again, this is where we need government regulation. Right. It's a tincture. It's like a drop, you know, yeah, like yeah. essential oily kind of sure. thing. She's drinking like half quarts and quarts of this mm-hmm. every day. Yep. And Amy, or Amy, Hope and Aurora are peddling this shit to anyone who will who will listen. They're saying it cures mm-hmm. cancer. Yeah. They're saying, somebody calls into the Dumb and Dumber show and they're like, doesn't this turn people blue? And Hope's like, listen, one guy made it wrong and he fucked it all up for the rest of us. It does not okay. turn you blue. Like, meanwhile, shit. Meanwhile, Amy is turning into a smurf before all of our mm-hmm. eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's bad. Now- at one point, Amy reaches out to her mother to come and see her. So there's kind of this underlying anxiety here. Mm-hmm. We, 
I believe Amy was starting to panic. I think so too. I really do because she's dying. Yeah. And I think she's freaking out a little bit about it. I think she knows she's in big, big trouble Mm -hmm. that this is, this whole organization has gotten away from her. I think she realizes how sick she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, like all of us, when things are going sideways, what do you want? You want your mom. Yeah. And let me tell you something. This is, we'll get to it, but this is number, point number two, where mom fails her. Mm -hmm. So Linda didn't go, guys. She reached, Amy's reaching out and says, please come and see me. And Linda doesn't go. And don't forget, Tara, her sister's watching the live stream. So she knows. She knows how bad she knows this is. She knows what's going on. And Linda could have went and could have probably made a difference here. Probably. Yeah. So uh, Amy's drinking tons of it. Um, Tara sees the live stream. She's stunned by how Amy looks. She, she calls the sheriff in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know the laws here. Like I said, in Pennsylvania, you can have somebody, if you're next of kin or whatever, you can have somebody held. 51, it's for 20, Yeah, for 24 hours, maybe. 24, 72. I can't remember Something what it is. Like that. Yeah, there is the ability to, yes. to take somebody who you if, believe is truly mentally ill. Like if you think they're a harm to themselves or else somebody or others. else. Yes. Amy's the clearly sheriff, a harm to herself. The sheriff says, I can't do anything. She's told me she's fine. She's refusing medical attention. I don't know. Now, Mm -hmm. 55 minutes into episode two. That's your timestamp. They look like they're cleaning up a live stream. And we hear Aurora off camera say, there's, quote, there's been moments when mom has asked us to take her to a 3D hospital. And we were like, nope. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, that's the crime right there. Yeah. That's the crime. crime. And they, and Amy had convinced them through this whole, like, the, the whole world is 3D. Mm-hmm, like anything mm-hmm. that's not them is 3D. I shouldn't throw around 3D without explaining what it means. Yeah, yeah, like anything that's not them is 3D and mm-hmm. 3D is bad. Because they operate at 5D. 5D. Guys. Yes. Right. This is 3D, not mm-hmm. as good. 5D is where it's at. Um, so th- they're not taking anybody to a 3D hospital. A grocery store is a 3D thing. Like everything's yeah. 3D. Yeah. So mom is asking to be taken to a hospital. Yeah. And they're and saying she, they're no. like, nope. Yeah, because at one point she said, "I'd never want to go to that," so they're holding her to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Debbie, let's not forget Mother Debbie, who's mm-hmm. somewhere out there. This is the good version of Mother Debbie. Yes, she's out there, and she calls the FBI, and mm-hmm. uh, they get on them, and they end up having to flee to Hawaii. Then we open with episode three. Now we're in Hawaii. They're all over the damn place. They're all over the place. We see a little bit from Amy's daughter Maddie on her TikTok. Yeah. Talking about my mom's a cult leader, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I can't believe I can't explain what my mother believes in, but Rob Williams is involved somehow. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> it's not funny. Like this poor kid is like my mother's going off the deep end, but the fact that this poor child's there going, I mean, Robin Williams is somehow involved. I don't know. None of us understand why Robin Williams. None of us understand. Don't get me wrong. I loved him, but I, I loved don't get him it too. But he wasn't really an alien, guys. No. No, that was a character on TV. Right, right. So in July 2020, they end up in Hawaii and Amy's loving it. I mean, how could you not? Hawaii looked gorgeous. beautiful. She felt yeah. like shit. It was warm. It was pretty. Like, Mother God if I says felt- pineapple melts in your mouth in Hawaii. Yeah, sure. It probably I does. Want, I don't want to go anywhere near your mouth, Father God. Get it away from me. <laughs> I don't want near anything about you, but mm-hmm. I do enjoy a good pineapple. Yeah, me too. She's just tri- thriving there, he says, and she was healing. No, she wasn't. She was getting grayer and bluer and thinner. Yeah. So she does a live stream and she gets nine watchers and she starts freaking out again, watching her turn into a Smurf. Tara says she was watching and she found a Skype number and she called her and she says Amy was blue mm-hmm. and she needed medical help and Tara wanted to get her to the hospital. And Amy laughed and said, I'm Mother God, bitches. God. Okay. Again. Just being a sister myself, um, I'm not going to respond well to my sister in this position. I would to my mother. If anyone was going to break through, it would probably be my mother. Yeah. In probably. person. Yeah. It probably would not be my sister over Skype. No. Just saying. No. So they decide to put her on Dr. Phil. Of course. Who had Dr. Phil coming into this documentary on their bingo card? I did Dr. Phil on the bingo card. Mm-mm. I did it. 
So Dr. Phil, they, they, they involve Dr. Phil on this. They're like, that he, we, he's going to help cure her. We honestly thought he would at least maybe get her help. That's what they're saying. Mom's thrilled. She was expecting Oprah. She thought it would be Oprah. But she's Dr. like, I'm Phil. okay with Dr. Phil. I'm all right with that. Yeah. I, I mean, Oprah it. created Dr. Phil. So that part's, you know, clear. So Linda says, Linda, Amy's mom says this was the last chance to save her. So she's, she drives to the Dr. Phil show. For some reason, she made a big deal about how she drove to the Dr. Phil show. But yeah. Tara didn't. They just zoomed her in. Yeah. I don't know weird. why. Okay. No. So she tell now don't oh, forget, what? this is the height of COVID too. I was going to say, maybe it's a COVID thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. I was trying to figure out what the date was. So um, Linda tells Amy how much she loves her and Amy plays all mystic and actually doesn't look too bad in this video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's like, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to abandon my children, but like the angels told me to. Right. I'm God. What am I supposed mm-hmm. to do? Yep. And Linda's like, this went sideways. Yeah. And Dr. Phil ends up ridiculing her. And scolding her instead of helping her. Shocker. Shocker. (sighs) Oh, you mean Dr. Phil used her for ratings and then discarded her? I'm stunned. I'm stunned by this. Mm -hmm. He's otherwise such an honorable and upstanding guy. I know. Amy's... (laughs) Your face when you said that. (laughs) Amy is beyond pissed off at her Earth family. Mm-hmm. She says they are treason. They are in treason, she says. Yes. They're in treason. I, I, that's, that's not a thing you can be in, but okay. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. It's not a state of being, but go on. At this point, people in Hawaii are starting to get pissed off. And Dumb and Dumber decide to tell Hawaii that mom is Pele, goddess of volcano and fire, because <laughs> cultural appropriation. Right. And the mm-hmm. locals are fucking pissed. They go fucking crazy. And I'm here for this. They, yes, they, I am too. They get these motherfuckers kicked out of Hawaii. They get yeah. them kicked out of Hawaii. Good. Now we go back in time again to 1982. And it is the divorce between Amy's parents. And we learn it wasn't as smooth as mom Linda had made it seem. Mm-hmm. She had an evil stepmom who like locked her in closets and shit and abused her. And Linda at one point even saw bruises on Amy and uh, we didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about it. Why would we? To me, to me, that's failure number one right there. Yeah, that is failure number one. Failure number one not protect your child. Is not protecting your child. Failure number two, not going to see your child on her deathbed. Failure number three, involving Dr. Phil. Yes. Okay. I can agree with all this. Mm -hmm. So now we see Cole, Amy's son. Mm -hmm. He says he got home from work. Or he got him from school, fifth grade, not work. <laughs> and his dad, little businessman <laughs> coming home from school, <laughs> little businessman, fifth grader coming home from school in his suit with his briefcase. I would trust him as a fifth grader to handle my money more than these idiots. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so he gets home. His dad's car's there, which was weird. And his dad tells him, "Your mother has left." And he says, I know she did love us, but I was angry. And as I got older, I pitied her. Well, you should be angry. Your mother fucking abandoned you. Yep. Yep. Maddie was only five years old when Amy left. And she said she doesn't blame her because her mental state was clearly not good. Yeah. And Maddie says, I was very angry, but I also had a soft spot for her because I had that little girl inside of me that wanted her mom. That was heartbreaking. I know. We see that Maddie sent her an email and bitched her out. And Amy told her, come to my house. I love you. I miss you. Maddie's like, mm, that's a no. big no from me, dog. No. No, I've seen the live stream with Dumb and Dumber. I'm not coming there. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Imagine so, how bad that house smelled. I was just going to say to you, like a little further down, how does this house smell? Before the corpse. Oh, it smells real bad. Yeah. Which is why I think when the corpse happens, they don't even They don't even flinch. notice. They don't even notice. So December 2020, now these idiots are on national radar because mm-hmm. they've been on Dr. Phil and Chip. And now neighbors in Crestone are trying to get them kicked out. Yeah. Because they're just like, we You're too weird this. for Crestone. Yeah. What has gone? What's gone What wrong? has happened? Mm-hmm. Dumb and Dumber decide they're going to stay in Crestone with the live stream and the business with Michael. And mom and father God are going to go back out to Mount Shasta. Right. But they don't have that sweet house anymore. Mm-mm. So they're like camping. We see Which Maddie. Which is exactly what you want to do with a critically ill woman. Yes. We see yeah. Maddie and Amy texting back and forth. And Matt, um, 
We see, yeah, Amy saying, I love you. Please connect with me. And Maddie says, if she had come home, she would have been welcomed. Yep. Then Tara, Sister Tara's at a friend's house on New Year's Eve, partying it up. Her phone rings. It's her sister. She doesn't answer, answer. it. Whoa. This is something Jenny would do. Jenny would be like, I'm out to dinner with my friends. I'll call her later. Um, um, what, what would she do that if she thought you were dying in a cult? Um, maybe not. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe not. But you know, who knows with Jenny? We don't know. All right, Jenny. We don't know what side of the bed she woke up on that day. <laughs> um, yeah. So we don't know if Amy was in a vulnerable spot. Yeah. Was calling for help. Like, I need an injection out of here right now. Beam me up. I don't know. Right. Right. So Amy calls her back later. I don't know. And she's like, Happy New Year, whatever. And she's like, do you, you need help? You know, should I call an ambulance? Should I call the police? Blah, blah, blah. Amy's like, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I'm good. I'm good. Tara's like, come home. We'll take care of you. Amy's like, no, no, no. It takes four people to care for me. You can't handle it. You don't have all the colloidal silver that I need. Forget right. it. Right. April 2021, mom was told by Robin Williams to go to Oregon. Now, there's some really tough footage of this. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. She's bright blue. She's got to be 80 pounds. She's skeletal. She's blue. It's bad. It's real bad. Yeah. I kept saying to Timmy because he was watching this part with me. I kept saying, please don't, please don't let them show her. Please don't let them. Like, I couldn't watch. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. So, Hope flies out there. Blah, blah, blah. She dies. Okay. So mm -hmm. she's dead. They keep her body around for quite a They don't a really time. believe she's dead. She's dead, but she's ascended. Right. And she's going to come back into her body. So we have to keep her body around. But it's then still also, they thought her body was going to ascend with her. So they're very puzzled that it's here. With here. Yeah. Also, her body is still warm. So they say. They remark on how warm the body is and how bendable she is. And they begin taking care of the body. They're washing it. They're taking care of it. They're putting headphones on her, giving her water. They have an electromagnetic frequency reader. And, you know, it's reacting, of course, to the silver. All the silver. And the probably some of the decomposition, you know, decomposing of her body. The gas is coming off. Yes. Like, there's all sorts of shit happening here that's not good. Yes. So basically, they take the body around. They take it back to um, Colorado. It goes on a tour. Mm -hmm. This body goes on a journey. Like President Lincoln. Like President Lincoln being taken. <laughs> being taken. From Washington, <laughs> Illinois. Yes. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. Just like President Lincoln, <laughs> so goes Amy Carlson. Yes. So basically, they end up going back to Crestone. Michael freaks out when he sees the corpse, runs to the cops. He also right. cleans out the bank account, three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Right. I, I don't think I blame him for this. I don't either. He's like, oh, I'm out of here. These people um, are a fucking Looney Tunes. The although I would have cleaned out that money, I was sent a chunk of it to Amy's children. That's I just my too. opinion. But yeah. whatever. Um. So and I thought this was funny. Somebody suddenly everyone's like, especially L. He's like, I was hands off. I had no idea what was going on. You know. Oh, oh. All of a sudden, nobody knows nothing. I don't know nothing about nothing. So they they find the body like we saw in the beginning, and we're back to the police interview now with Jason and Kevin, and they're all telling the cops nothing was in Amy's name, and then like charges are dropped, like they can't find anything to charge these people with. Not I know abusing the corpse. I would think I would think if nothing else, they could charge Jason with. Abuse, you know, yeah. how you're treating yeah. a dead person and yeah. moving a body over state lines with that. Yeah. Like you need documentation to do that. I, yeah. I saw a little Miss Sunshine. I know you have to fill out paperwork. Yes. Yes. Take a body back to a different yes. state. So the autopsy reveals that she died from organ failure from anorexia, alcohol abuse and colloidal silver. Mm -hmm. John and Jason are now hanging out and he's, you know, got this real meth up feel to him again. I think he's back on meth. I don't know what's happening. Agreed. Dumb and Dumber head to Vermont, where they continue their live stream scamming. Yes, but they've now changed the name of the organization. And Hope's like, did people think that they were going to, we were going to just pack up and go home? We were no. not going to pack up and go home. They are like the most insolent, obnoxious, like 15-year-old girls I hate them. I hate in them. adult bodies. I hate them. So now we see one year later, okay? Mm -hmm. One year later, Hope and Aurora go crawling back to their mommies in Florida, because of, of course they do. They do. 
And they host a 5D spirituality web series. I'm not even going to say the name of it because I don't want to give them one ounce of a view. Fine. John and Jason live together in Wisconsin. They form some weird company named Joy Reigns, and they <laughs> post videos as Father God and Father Multiverse. Now that I might watch. <laughs> and Faith is a healer in Colorado. Please do not hire her. Go to her, anyone, PSA. No, don't do that. L lives in Florida and has over 40,000 followers on Telegram. I'm like, Telegram? What's Telegram? Telegram is a chat app like WhatsApp. Okay. All right. So he's he's talking to 40,000 weirdos, pretty much. We don't sure. know. Uh, Buddha and Mary are roommates in Colorado. Mary, I want a whole series just on Mary. Mm-hmm. We didn't get nearly enough Mary. Mary is an older woman. She had nine children, six, nine children, six grandchildren, I think. Yeah, something like that. Like, she, I want to know everything that happened with Mary. Can we she just was have a Mary doctor? when she joined up on this. Yeah. 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 Um, Aaron's living in Colorado. Aaron, he is living in Colorado with her three children. I hope there's eyes on those kids at all times. Right. Didn't she have four children? Oh, it just said her children. It just her said children. her children. Okay. I'm like, where did a child go? <laughs> where are the children? Um, Miguel, a.k.a. Michael, Arch- Archangel Michael, declined to participate. Never be heard from again with his $300,000. Amy's son, Cole, is studying microbiology in Germany. It seems like her kids are doing okay. Thank God. Maddie wants to be a nurse and has moved to Colorado. Oh, keep eyes on her. Where is she going yeah. in Colorado? Yeah, hopefully as weird as she gets is like Boulder. Yeah. Hopefully yeah, we don't get yeah. weirder than Boulder. We don't know anything about the younger kid. I know his name is Aiden only because I saw it on one of the signs. Okay, yeah, but they don't talk about it. Yeah, the father must not have given consent. Yeah. Um, Amy's remains were returned to her family. Amanda, she was 45. She looked 90. So let's go through the central questions that I posed in the beginning. Was this a cult? I believe it was. Was it a successful cult? I believe it was not a successful cult, but I do believe it was a cult. It was a group of people who were listening to one person as their sole arbiter of truth. Mm. She, she either encouraged them or forced them to detach from their families. She either ordered them or. Did or, she encourage them to detach from their families? Yeah. She told them that like their families were abusive and stuff. Okay. Yeah. She played that game. Okay. All right. And you know, she made them take on different names. Yeah. I think it's a cult. Is it, you know, I mean, this is only like 20, 25 people who were involved in this. Right. Right. Is but it it's more than just a bunch of Looney Tunes cult? in the desert. Yeah. There's. Uh, uh, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was restricted people, eating. There, were, there was coercive control all over the place. Yeah. There was restricted eating. There yep. was restricted money. There, mm-hmm. I mean, they could leave, but that wasn't. But they didn't feel like they could leave because they've been so brainwashed into believing that this is Mother God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's a cult. Um, not in a lot of the ways we think of like, well, it, I don't know. All these cults show up slightly differently, but with common attributes like the control, like the separating from your family, like creating a system where you are the one soul expert on everything. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I could uh, start a cult and also be in a cult i'm I don't not letting know. i'm not letting you out of my sight i don't trust you <laughs> you're Guys, gonna walk yourself right into a cult uh, now let me just say i would not have fallen for this bullshit no 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 you no wouldn't have been drinking way. the colloid silver the cult i enter needs to um it needs to be run by a toxic man because that's my weakness i think there was a potential for you to get sucked into nexium hmm early maybe, on maybe maybe but maybe yeah. yeah yeah i i just you know whatever i'll go right in there i'll give it a shot people are Why nice <laughs> what's gonna happen of course it'll happen okay what happened why do these people believe these things like are they really just all burnt out so badly because there are large 
I want to say something. There's a large swath of people in this country who are into spirituality. Of course. Who Crystals, might even be into oils. like there's aliens or there's yeah. UFO. That's that is all harmless. I don't care. This I mean, is, I care because I think it's interesting, but like I don't care if you believe that, you know, the universe is controlled by some alien on some planet somewhere. Sure, I mean, sure. What doesn't bother me. Does, doesn't impact my life at all. You do you. And I feel the same way I apply this logic to politics, to religion. Mm-hmm. You believe what you want. It's when you start espousing those beliefs on other people. Yeah, and, and, and manipulating people into believe people. them too. Yeah, yeah, that I have a problem. And same. I don't, but I don't know, like, what happened? Like, L, for example, he seems intelligent. He does. He what seems happened? normal. Oh, his dad know. died from opioid abuse. Oh, that trauma. could be it. Mm-hmm. I mean, all if we go into every one of these people's stories, there's trauma of some sort. Even Dumb and Dumber, there's something that happened. There's something. And Not one trauma, of these motherfuckers has a job. No. And honestly, Dumb and Dumber's trauma could very well be that, like, life was too easy for them. Like, like um, Charlotte's daughter on Sex and City, Lily, right. writing the, yes. the ballad of privilege on her right. piano. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That could be the, the thing. You don't know what happened to all these people. But something happened. They all were looking for something. Yeah. They're all searching for something. And... I understand that. I am always searching for something, some greater understanding of myself, some greater understanding of the world. Yeah. I have done some weird energy modality healing shit that I know would make you go, really, girl, (laughs) get it together. I understand this. Mm -hmm. But there's no point at which I'm abandoning my whole life for it. I'm still very much rooted in science and reality and you know i've done some of these like energy healing things and i've been like and i'm fine with that stuff i don't shit all over that stuff like i said when i have a problem with it is when it's it's being forced on other people right if you believe that putting crystals on your body gives you a healing energy go for it i could care less you know i mean I'm up to try anything if I'm feeling some kind of way. Like with my I menopause anxiety, I've been just trying everything. So I go to acupuncture once a month. I I feel better for doing it. I don't know what it does. Right. I joke sometimes with my acupuncturist, who's my friend, who will probably listen to this because she is one of my cult buddies. Mm-hmm. Hi, 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 Dana, if you're listening. Um, and like we joke about my spleen pulse. I don't know what this is. But she I puts needles in me and I feel better. I don't have like an unwavering confidence in Western medicine. No. I don't. I don't Especially either. in farm pharma, big pharma. Yeah. But you know, I, I do I do trust science. I do too. I, I appreciate the scientific method. Yes. And the thing about Eastern medicine, like Chinese medicine is way older than any medicine yes. you and I yes. deal with every day. Yes. So, you know, it could yes. be something there, you know. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There are alternative ways of healing. That are all valid. That are all, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. This, my fa- this is something different. This is something different. As my father said the first time I went to acupuncture. So he's, he's a physician, and his focus is his specialty was physical medicine and rehabilitation. So he deals with people in pain all the time. Mm-hmm. This is his thing. Mm-hmm. And the first time I went to acupuncture for my back, he's like, first of all, tell me where they put the needles. Like he was fascinated. Mm-hmm. He's like, mm-hmm. and honestly, he's like, if waving a feather over you makes you feel better, great, yeah. go do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to understand it. People who to, live w- with chronic pain, I don't yeah. I don't judge them for trying anything. Same. Anything. It is someone a, who has been on and off in chronic pain. It's a horrific way to live. It is. Uh, it is 100%. That was not this. No. This was what the minute she was like Robin Williams is giving me some orders, yeah, some I'm red out. flag should have went up. I'm out, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there any wrongdoing? Um, I think Jason was very abusive. I do too. Probably to everybody. Yeah. Um, he made my twin flame father John cry. I know. And we don't, we don't <laughs> support that. <laughs> Everything that they did to her corpse was horrible. I know. I know. And I think seeing how ill she was and not getting her help when she asked for it. I don't yeah. know if that's a crime, but it's certainly a moral crime. 
I think it's a crime. I feel like it's got to be a crime. There's got to be something in there. It's got to be negligence in some way. It's got to be. I I mean, they they were holding her against her will in a sense. Yes. Right. Like if someone is incapacitated to a point where they can't get themselves to help and they're asking for help, is that a crime? I don't know. I don't don't know. know. I don't know. It should be. It should be. If any of our backdoor friends or Little Miss Recappers are attorneys, um, please, please uh, let us know. I'll also ask, my ex-husband's a lawyer. I'll text him and be like, I have a question for you. Yeah, because we don't know. Like, it could have been, um, it could be Colorado law that it's not. Like, I could see Colorado being a little real loosey-goosey. Yeah, I don't know, but definitely think that, I mean, there's absolutely a crime in the management of her corpse. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. I will say there was a part that I really enjoyed. I just forgot about this and you reminded me um, when you mentioned our Facebook group, Backdoor Friends. Mm -hmm. At one point, Elle is talking about how the hippies did this all wrong. They wanted like (laughs) communities where they could just live together. But he says, we're all about learning how to go through the back door. Right. You are not backdoor friends. No, you are not. Get that get that get phrase that out of your mouth. Right sir. Out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yes. No. Um, I enjoyed talking about this with you. I did too. I in, I enjoyed this. I mean, it everyone's talking about it right now. It I think was the fact that both ride. I think the fact that both Twin Flames and Love Has Won have come out together. Mm-hmm. Uh, not mm-hmm. to, they're not anything to do with each other, but around the same time. So I feel like there's like flares of good cult documentaries that like pop up. And yeah. it's like, we're right now in a good cult space. There's other yeah. stuff coming too. There's a lot of cult talking right now, which I love. Yeah. Um, so I found this really fascinating. I mean, everyone's laughing about it because it's nuts. When you just describe it on its face, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is bonkers crazy and very, not funny, haha, but it's hilarious in how ridiculous it it's is. It's absurd. It's absurd. absurd. It mm-hmm. is absurd. Mm-hmm. It's also really heartbreaking because this young woman died at 45 years old. 45. By, po- by poisoning herself. And all of these people. Failed her. C- failed her and contributed to it. And her children are left without their mother, which mm-hmm. given who her mother was, th- who their mother was, might be a better thing. Mm-hmm. Unless their mother took the time to get help. Yeah. And, yeah. and get healthy. It probably is better that she yeah. wasn't raised with them. But. It's it's got everything. It's got it, everything. The cult knows it's got everything. Mm-hmm, it's got mm-hmm. food. It's got drugs. It's got aliens. It's like it's got everything. It's got everything. It's got Robin Williams, and I'm here for him. <laughs> I'm here for Robin Williams too. And I don't know why he's the one, but I'm. If you'll notice, all the it. bad things that that we're told to do came through Robin Williams, and not my precious John Denver. No, nor John just- Lennon. Yeah, yeah. John Denver's just sitting over there like, guys. Leave me alone. John Denver and Mr. Rogers of the Galactics are sitting in a corner going, I don't want to be in this shit. <laughs> Why are they pulling me into this shit? And John Lennon are, and Prince are like, okay, let's see how this plays out. <laughs> Can I bang any of you? Is there an opportunity for that? Because I think both of them would might have gotten into that. Oh, Amanda, I think we've said it all. I'm done talking about Mother God. I can't anymore with her. We're done with her. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that we had? Any other thoughts that you have on this? I think this is all it. But please, I mean, we're done speaking about this on mic, but let's chat about it in in the Facebook group. Let's chat about it. I know know our girl Lola. Lola Mm -hmm. was texting me on Thanksgiving going, you got to go watch this. This is bananas. Stephanie was texting me. My good friend Leslie DJ was texting me mm-hmm. like, "Girl, you got to see this." This is texting you, yeah. We're yeah. all in yeah. on this, so on yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, for those of you who don't know about our Facebook group, it's called uh, Little Miss Recaps Backdoor Friends. It's on Facebook. It's a lot of fun. We have a great time in there. There's like what six hundred of us so far, almost seven hundred. Yeah, there's a lot of us in there. We have a really good time in there. All are welcome as long as you're like a decent human being and behave yourselves. Don't try yeah. to get in there. And be like, I'm Mother God. We don't want that. No, we don't want Mother God. We're not going to take your colloidal silver. No. no. <laughs> don't scam us. We don't like no. the scamming. Um, also, we are doing Sister Wives on our Little Miss Recap Extra feed. We're going to start we a are. rewatch once the season's done. Yep. I'm, get- and I'm getting the list. And Stephanie and I will be here soon with Golden Batch. The finale of that <gasps> airs tonight. 
cannot wait. And then Amanda and I have some more crown coming at you. Yes, oh, and Steph yeah. and I, Virgin River's coming back for its final two episodes of the season. Oh, okay. So Got we'll it. have that. And uh, yeah. we have some surprises coming in December. So stay tuned. Oh, I want to announce Murder Show Monday will be happening, but I'm postponing it, I think, until the new year because December yeah. is just fucking crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of TV going on mm-hmm. and the holidays mm-hmm. and all of that. So yes, yes. when when you hit the doldrums of January and February and you need some murders, yeah, we're we at you. So please, if you can support the show, subscribe through Patreon, Supercast, Apple subscriptions. It's $8 a month. You get commercial free. You get extra Sister Wives content and we'll be putting more stuff up there. If you can't, great. Just leave us a review. We yeah. would love that just as much. And Time, talent, and only. treasure. Yeah, five stars only. Five Time, stars. talent, and treasure are all the things yep. that make life better. All right, Amanda, my friend, it's been a pleasure. Been a this, pleasure. This is Mother God and the Galactic signing off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, guys, for listening. We'll see you soon. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye.